opposition, and dissolution. The main strategy of this age is opposition. Opposition is the spirit of fight. Fight this, fight that. We hear it everywhere. Opposition is at best a stopgap measure. As a long-term solution, opposition is the strategy of an inadequate handle on experience that cannot imagine or create beyond it. It merely perpetuates involvement in the thing opposed, particularly if opposition to the thing is habitual and makes of opposition a career move rather than a momentary task. It makes a climate of the thing and our opposition rather than a case of stormy weather expected to pass and to change. Fight is passé, old school. The higher and emerging strategy of the developing age is dissolution and emergence of the new. Dissolution is the spirit of freedom. Dissolution is the ultimate requirement for change, the grip upon the old must dissolve to permit emergence of the new. For all long-term solutions, dissolution is the necessary, intelligent requirement. It fully encounters, is absorbed in, and then ceases the thing to be solved by dissolving it. We may then choose to dissolve the grip of an experience in the mood of opposition, but to do so we must become reconciled with it first. Only then can its force be neutralized as both opposition and reconciliation get recognized as equally entangling forms of involvement. We may choose to oppose an experience, to have the emotional experience of opposing the experience, rather than to choose to dissolve it. This is indulgence in opposition particularly when we have the means of dissolving it. This statement takes into account the short-term necessity at times of opposing an experience. I'm speaking of long-term opposition because ineffectual and habituated to chronic disturbance, even addicted to it. The substantiality of every experience results from the crunch force of opposition to it. Without opposition, or opposition to its effects, it is insubstantial, a phantom, an ephemeral idea subject to vanishing in moments. To dissolve opposition is not to submit. One cannot dissolve an experience that way. In truth, the opposition in us remains, but perhaps suppressed, as we espouse idealistic values. To dissolve opposition is to dissolve both our opposition and our sense of the thing opposed. There is no submission. There is no loss. There is a tacit sense of freedom where once the density of the opposed experience existed. If you must, oppose, but as soon as possible, dissolve.